Okay, welcome back. So again, we were checking back. I had a mistake written to my slide and I wanted you to see that what happens when that mistake occurs because if we fail to check, then we may not catch that mistake. We could be like, oh, look, there's our answer, but it wasn't quite our answer. So doing our first term, two times two should have given me four. Two times my outer term should have given me two X. Uh, sorry, negative 2x, because this is now negative. I'm literally looking at that. My inner terms give me negative 18y, and my outer terms now give me a negative times a negative becomes a positive xy. And guess what? That matches back. So again, is it important to test our, test our terms? Absolutely. Okay, here's another one. Um, this is by grouping again, but this time instead of simple, like a simple four terms, we had six. So again, you find what's common. Here what's common is all of these are x's and all of these have a y. So we factor out that x, we factored out a y, and we could actually see that 8, 12, and negative 20 have a common factor of 4. We pulled down the common factor, the common binomial that was created, that 2x squared plus 3x minus 5, and all we were left with over here was x and 4y. And we can factor 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. That's a quadratic. You know how you should know how to factor those by the end of today. Whether you use um, the A times C method, you use the box method, you use the guess and check method, you use synthetic division, whatever your method is, you should be able to do that by the end. Okay. Here we have our second option, our third option. I don't even know what number we're on, but we are multiplying A times C. And so to multiply A times C, uh, remember, you just have to kind of get it written in that standard form of AX squared plus BX plus C to recognize it. So this is especially useful when A does not equal 1. You can do this when A equals 1, of course, but this is significantly more useful when A does not equal 1. So recall our standard form of AX squared plus BX plus C. Make sure you rewrite all your polynomials like this in order to do this. You can factor out a greatest common factor if you need to. This isn't always going to be your first step. This might be a necessary step, though. Identify your a, a, B, and C. Multiply A times C. Now, here's the slightly hard part. Once you multiply A times C, you have to find factors of A times C. So whatever that A times C is, find factors of those that now add up to that B value, that middle value. You create those two middle terms, you're going to factor by grouping again. So this is why we taught you by grouping first. And then you multiply to check back. So here we have an example. Um, I would first check to see, oh, where's my steps? There's my steps. The very first thing I would do is check to see if I had a greatest common factor. Um, but before I do, let's rewrite it in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So step one, find a greatest common factor, but we're good. There is no greatest common factor, so we can go ahead and skip that. Step two, identify our A, B, and C. So our A equals one, our B equals eight, and our C equals 12. And they're all positive, so I left them all positive. A times C is one times 12. That's our step three. And so that becomes either positive 12 or technically we could be looking at negative 12, right? If we're if we're considering the fact that maybe our middle value is negative. But we check our middle value, it's positive, so we're probably looking at positive factors. So we go ahead and factor our A times C to figure out what adds up to B. So I created a table to make this easier for us. Factors of 12 are going to be 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. But which of these would add up to B? So I went ahead and added them, and we got 13, 8, and 7. And the only one that looks similar, the only one that is going to add up to 8 is that middle one. So this is what we call our, our middle terms. That 8x is actually going to be comprised of 2x and 6x. So we write that, x squared plus 2x plus 6x plus 12. This is what I mentioned when I said factor by grouping, you needed at least four terms. Up until now, you only had three terms. But now, as you can see, we split that middle term. And that's going to be an important concept later when we actually get to a slide called split the middle term. I kind of left that because it's kind of, once you've read all of these, it's kind of common sense where that comes from. But this is what it's talking about. You literally split the middle term, and then you factor by grouping from here. So now we factor by grouping. So I'm going to recognize, I'm going to, you know, pair them off. What do I think I want to match up? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and split it down the middle, and that's going to be x squared plus 2x and 6x plus 12. And what's common? Well, what's common here is an x, and what's common here is the 6. So I go ahead and factor that out. Now I'm left with x plus 2. That's common, so I pull the x plus 2 out. And if I look at what's left, I'm left with x plus 6. So there you have our two 
factors, right? So we test it, step seven, we test it by foiling back. And you get x squared plus 2x plus 6x plus 12, first, outer, inner, last. And we combine that back and we get x squared plus 8x plus 12, which is the same one we started with. That means this is our correct foil. So that's what it means to multiply a times c. I have one more visual representation of it because here we have an example where a does not equal one. And you can see that when a doesn't equal one, it's gonna change the entire game of what this factor could look like. So it makes it really easy to do this method once you recognize that a doesn't equal one. So greatest common factor, two, 11, 12, nothing matches. X, x squared x and technically x to the zero, nothing matches. So we're gonna go ahead and skip that and move on to identifying our a, b, and c. And our a is two, our b is 11, and our c is 12. So we multiply eight times c, so that's two times 12, and we get 24. And I went ahead and brought my x's down because I'm giving you another visual representation of what this looks like. So that actually becomes 24 x squared. So when we factor those, that's where those x's come back. When we factor those and we think of something that can add up to 12, well, you have one and 24, that's not, sorry, not to 12, up to 11, that's my middle value. One and 24, that's not gonna get us to 11, but 2 and 12, still not going to get us to 11. What about 3 and 8? Yeah, probably going to get us to 11. So I'm going to go ahead and write 8x and 3x. And I guess back, I check, sorry, I check back and see that 8x plus 3x does equal 11x. It is my B value. So we're good there. So now I write this as my middle term. I bring all that information down. And now I have four terms. I can go ahead and factor by grouping. So I went ahead and split them down the middle again because I recognize that those have common factors. The second set has common factors. And so we pull that down and we are now have a common binomial of x plus four. So I pull that x plus four out. And if I pull it, then I then I'm left with x plus four. And if I pull that two x and that three out, then I have that second factor. Of course, I do step seven and I foil back to check. My first value got two x squared. My outer value uh, actually got me three x. My inner value got me eight x. And my last value got me 12. I combine like terms and I got two x squared plus 11 x plus 12. Is that the original? Absolutely. So those were our true factors. I believe my method might be coming up on me. My time might be coming up, but I'm going to go ahead and start the box method and you might see you back in video three. Okay, so our box method, this is another a visual representation for trinomials. This is great for those of you who are visual learners. This is kind of what it's going to look like, but I'm going to walk you through our steps. So you're going to create that two by two grid that you can see down here, that two by two grid. In the top left hand corner, you're going to put your AX squared value, the entire thing, not just the coefficient, the entire thing. In your bottom right value, bottom right box, you're going to put your plus C value. And if it's negative, then you're going to put your negative C value. Follow your diamond, and I'll show you what that means, to find your other box terms, and then multiply back to check. Always, always, always we multiply back to check. So here's our first example. And we have x squared plus 6x plus 8. So let's pull up those steps. 2 by 2 grid, ax squared top left, plus c bottom right, diamond for my other terms, foil and check. And if we have an a value that does equal something other than 1, you may have to use a little bit of by grouping. Okay, so let's start with that two by two grid. This is what it's going to look like. And real quick, because I said I'm going to mention the diamond method. That's what this, we just literally create a diamond. And this is just going to get us those middle terms. That's all that means. So going back to step two, let's go ahead and put our AX squared in the top left box, our plus C in the bottom right box. Now we bring that diamond back. We put our C value up top and we put our b value on bottom and so or it really doesn't matter but basically you're putting your your c and your b value so you're trying to figure out what those middle terms would be so what are factors of eight that could add up to six okay factors of eight are one and eight two and four we're probably going to look for two and four because one and eight won't give me six so i'm going to put those two and four in my diamond. And now I can see that that two and four that is gonna add to six, I am gonna double check that, but I can put those inf that information in my box. Double check that that is six X, double check, and that's where my factors come from. They're both positive, so that's X plus two and X plus four. Again, this box method is when A equals one. When A doesn't equal one, I'm gonna show you that in, a, in the next example. But of course, if I FOIL back and check X plus two and X plus four, my, out, my first term is X squared, my outer term becomes four X, my inner term is two X, my last term is eight. And so there is your finish. I check, it's correct. Okay. Here we have one more example. 
I'm going to get it started. Again, I'm trying to race that clock. So here is, uh, here's my 2 by 2 grid. I put my AX squared here. I put my C value here, bringing its positive or negative. And then I'm going to put 2 here and negative 6. And now we can't just say what factors of 2 get me 6. Now we have to say 